How's everybody doing tonight? I feel the same way. Feeling good. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, just because something is light, and you hear me say that a lot, light, doesn't mean that it has to be like bland and boring just because it's light, bland and boring. Use the freshest ingredients, and if you know a little bit how to intensify, intensify some flavors, and uh, hey, light cooking can be exciting, bold, and exciting, <laughs> and light. <laughs> so we're going to take a few dishes tonight, kind of get them a little lighter. How's that? Yeah. Not totally light but a little lighter. You ever heard of uh, mushrooms a la griot? Oh, no. Remember those things? Years ago, those marinated mushrooms you used to find everywhere, they kind of disappeared. I guess they got so light, they just <laughs> gonzo. <laughs> Feeling light. And uh, when you taste this creamy leek and potato soup, you won't believe that it has no cream in it. Probably a first on Emerald Live. It's light. Can you imagine what 40 cloves of garlic would do to chicken? That would make it light. I'm going to show you a light 40 clove garlic chicken. So light. Just light. Oh, yeah. We even got some light music by Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live band. Light. We got light music by Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Ho, ho, ho. Yes, indeed. We're feeling light right here on Emerald Live. Ladies, how are you? Nice to have you. Welcome. You. Ladies, welcome. Okay. We're feeling really light, light. right now. <laughs> light. Just. Yeah, these mushrooms, you know, remember, you would find them everywhere. At least where I grew up, you know, they'd be marinated mushrooms. They'd bring them to the table. They were light, you know. The, they would use those Pennsylvania button mushrooms, and they were kind of marinated a little bit. You got, how do they find them anymore these days? I don't know. So I... I decided to not only bring them back a little bit with a little twist, but we'll lighten them up a little bit. So uh, with holidays and birthdays and all those special things, you may want to bring these back, these light mushrooms. So instead of using the button mushrooms, I'm going to use an assortment. But let me get started with the sort of the marinade part of it. We're going to take white vinegar. So we've got an acidity or an acid there. Lemon juice, I like the combination of both. We could use one instead of both, but I like not only the little flavor of the lemon, but I like the white vinegar. It's a good thing, white vinegar. Then, we're gonna take some celery, some fennel, optional of course, but fennel, it's white fennel. So we're gonna take that, little onion, and then we're going to add a little garlic in there, too, a few cloves of garlic in there. We're cooking light tonight here, light. Watch them, ladies. Now, I've got some peppercorns, black peppercorns, some mustard seeds and a little bit of fennel seed. Wow. Whew. Rocket science. 
Now we're going to bring this up to temperature and we're going to steep. Remember I said earlier during the monologue, we're going to steep, we're going to extract some of the flavors out of the peppercorn, the mustard seeds, the fennel seeds, the fennel, the onion. Now, what we're going to do here is in this part here, what we're going to do is we're going to add our mushrooms. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of olive oil to this. And I'm going to add some oyster mushrooms. Those would be cultivated. What does that mean? Well, you could grow these in your backyard. If you had the right dirt, the right weather, the right board, you can grow them in the backyard. Shiitake mushrooms, cultivated mushrooms, same thing. You could grow those in the backyard. Now, morel mushrooms. You can't grow those in the backyard. You got to go in the wild to get those. That's why they call them wild mushrooms. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh, it just cracks me up how things work like that. <laughs> so, basically, these are hedgehog. We're going to add, instead of doing the button mushrooms, we're going to add just these assortment of mushrooms, and then we're going to sort of make them a la griot style. I've got some a uh, little bit of escarole here. Before I do that, let me add a little salt, some fresh ground pepper. Oh, yes. What do we have here? Hmm. A little wine. It's that fortifying thing. I think we'll add just a little bit in here. Why not add a little in here, too, right? Just make it even. Got a little escarole here, got some radishes. So uh, what we're gonna do in this skillet right here, gonna take some olive oil. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am, I apologize in advance <laughs> for any misdoing he may be doing. <clears throat> Hold on to your purse. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little salt on this escarole and start putting this with the olive oil, and then I'm gonna take these radishes. Don't you love radishes? Those things are kind of disappearing these days too. Huh. A little bit of chicken broth, and we're gonna cover this. So now, the mushrooms, you can see they're starting to cook a little bit. Once this steeps for about 10 minutes, we're gonna use that wonderful flavor in there. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna strain that vinegar lemon juice mixture, and we're gonna just sort of let them get the classic, as we said, a la griot style right there. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what they look like. Don't even think about touching that dial. Doc Gibbs! Oh. Ho! Keyboards, Lewis on the horns. Just back from Istanbul, Mr. Teddy on the drums. Thank you. And Doc Gibbs is in the house. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, shame on you. Cooking a little lighter tonight. So we've got this. Allegriok. The liquid we strain, we want that flavor. You want to cook the mushrooms for about 10 minutes. And then what we're going to do is strain them. Then the thing is, folks, is that you take the cooking liquid back. See, they're not all just all cooked to uh, schmitherines. Take that liquid back, the vinegar, 
lemon juice, there's flavors. Now we've got the mushroom juice in there. We reduce that by about half, pour it over the mushrooms, and then you put them in the ice box and you let them get cool or cold, and then you can kind of bring them out when you want and you have a nice little snack. You with me so far? Yeah. All right. One of the uh, ways that I like to kind of serve these also is that escarole that we were cooking earlier. Now, you can serve those warm, too, if you want to serve them warm. But what I do is I take the escarole, and I use this sort of as just a little nest. I like escarole. And we'll do this one on the other side here. See, and you can let this cool, too. And it's tasty. Then we'll take some of those beets, excuse me, those radishes. I love those radishes. I'm going to show you the madness here that I'm going to, the reason for my madness. <laughs> See, that's why they have holes in them. <laughs> now, the other thing that you can do is this. You can take some of that cool liquid that we had, and you can add some of that on here. Or what you can do is just take, it's sort of like pickled, right? So we'll take those wonderful mushrooms. And then what I like to do right at the end, see the juice that's left, again, from the vinegar, the lemon juice, we just take a little bit of that and drizzle it, and it'll get onto the escarole. So now that the escarole and the radishes have kind of got that seasoning thing going on. You with me so far? Okay. Is everybody feeling a little lighter? It's unbelievable, isn't it? Now, the optional thing here is you could serve this either with nice crusty bread make a wonderful little hors d'oeuvre, a little first course. You can actually slice some of that good crusty bread and grill it if you want and serve that with this. So it's really an option of how you want it. So there you have the classic mushrooms, folks, okay? All right. When we uh, talked about lighting things up, as in lightening things up, the perception of potato leek soup is that it's heavy. I don't know what perception pool that came from, but there's a way. Thing all right back there, folks? <laughs> there's a way that uh, you can lighten it up. Traditionally, what you would do, see, because if you made the soup hot, it's potato leek. If you cool it, then you got vichyssoise. But is it light? Who knows? Maybe most of you don't really care, okay? So usually you would start with a little bit of butter, okay? Not that I, I think butter's perfectly light, but that's me. So we'll get a little lighter and we'll add a little bit of olive oil first. Okay? Then, we're going to use these things, which I really love, leeks. And the thing is, is that they got a, you know, like a fuzzy head, stem at the bottom, you got to cut off. Darker green on the top, which you can use, but I got to tell you, they're really, really dirty. They got a lot of sand in them. So you have to really be sure to clean them well. What I tell people to do is to Clean them like you see this one here, and then just soak them in cold water. Try to rinse it a few times and get that out, okay? Because they're very sandy leeks, but they're very tasty. So uh, then, if you want to split them fine, if you want to keep them whole, we just cut them up like this. Another thing that I love to do is I like, sort of like what we did with the mushrooms, in that vinegar and lemon juice mixture, I love pickling leeks like that, too. 
and then you can chill them and serve them like with a vinaigrette. They're wonderful for salads. One of my favorite things that I like using leeks for too, beside the soup, is clam chowder. If you like clam chowder. All right. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Very simple. We're gonna start with a lot of leeks, and we're gonna cook these leeks in that olive oil. We're gonna add a little bit of salt, because it may be light, but it doesn't have to have no taste. A little salt, a little pepper. <laughs> now, once the leeks cook about three or four minutes, here's the option. I have potatoes. I'm using sort of a, just a gold white potato, not using a baking potato. And I got a little garlic that I'm going to add in mine once the leeks cook a little bit. And then all I'm going to add beside the salt and peppers, I've got chicken broth. You want to keep it vegetarian, you could just use a vegetable stock or just use water. So basically the leeks, three, four minutes, I'm going to add the potatoes, a little bit of garlic, I'm going to add the chicken broth. When we come back, another knot, stick around. Everybody, Emma Lagasse here, kind of lightening things up a little bit. All right, so the leeks, four or five minutes, olive oil. I added the chicken broth, brought that up to a simmer. Now I'm going to add the potatoes, okay? I'm going to add the potatoes. This is a good time right now. When you add potato, potato is one of those things that, um, I hate to say this, but like if you like kind of a little bit scorch something, put potato in it you have a good chance of taking it out, you know? You, just a little bit too much salt in those beans or something like that, you add a little bit of potato, it'll take some of that out. It's one of those great things. Makes a fantastic thickening agent, which is what we're gonna use this for. However, I wanna let this cook now. And I wanna let it cook and get flavorful, but I gotta make sure that the seasoning is somewhere close, even though we're gonna re-season it, because uh, we don't have a lot of help in here. Got four ingredients. We got salt, pepper, leeks, olive oil, and potatoes. Huh, give me a break. How light do you want it? <laughs> so that's when you want to make sure that, you know, the season, you don't want to make it perfect. You're going to come back and re-season. That's why there's seasoning and then there's re-season. Problem is why most people's food are horrible is because <laughs> they don't season. They wait till the end and then they season when they should be re-seasoning, then it's too late then. <laughs> so, all right, now, also, we're gonna bring this up to temperature and then we're gonna let this simmer, medium, medium low, depending on how hot your stove is. That's another thing, they jack up the burners like the house is shaking, the stove is so hot, hey, Use your knobs. <laughs> I use my knob every day. Okay? It's good, look. It's like, look. Low, medium low. There's a reason for these knobs. So use them. I'm on like the medium low right now. And feeling light. Everything all right, Ted? Yeah, man, I... You're light. You're feeling light right I'm now. feeling light. Okay, all right. Feeling light. Speaking about light, while the sim while these uh, potato leek soup's going on, let me show you about this light chicken. Oh. 
I got a whole, just a regular fryer, right? Whenever you're working with chicken, you know, you gotta, you gotta wash it, you gotta dry it. You gotta wash it, you gotta dry it. Wash it again, dry it. Wash it, wash your hands, wash the cutting board. Hey, look, I don't even take any more chances these days when I work with chicken. I take my shoes off, I wash my toes, <laughs> I scrape down my legs. I mean, I wash it all. After you get it all washed and now so you don't pass on any germs, you gotta kinda get to know your chicken. <laughs> See, we're not on a first name basis yet, but we're working on it, okay? Now, here's what we're gonna do. First thing after, you know, we've already washed them. We're gonna just sort of, where the skin and the breast meat here, gonna just sort of make a little, see how my finger's doing that? Get to know your chicken, okay? That's what's happening right now, right here. Rhoda, I'm gonna be doing something to the chicken. Shh. All right, let me wash my hands again. Now, what do I have here? Clean hands. I've got parsley. I've got some rosemary, and I got a little bay leaf, some thyme, whatever you like. Should you chop it? Yeah, you could chop it if you want to chop it. I just basically break it in half like this, and this is what's going to flavor the chicken. So I'm going to stick the rosemary down here, some on this side over here. I'm going to put the bay leaf down over here. I'm going to take some parsley like this, put some parsley in here. You follow me? You sure? Yeah. Well, okay. Kind of scaring me there for a minute. All right, now we got to know this chicken. We're going to season it with some salt <laughs> and some pepper. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little bit of string, a little butcher's twine, and we're going to tie up this chicken a little bit here. Just the legs will do. You could do the, the, uh, the wings if you want as well. We're just going to tie it so that we can hold it together here, the legs. Okay? That wasn't so difficult, was it? All right, now, and we got to know our chicken. Now, again, like I said, you can do the back legs, bada beam, you know, the whole bit. Great. Olive oil inside the bottom of this little Dutch oven here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait until this warms up a little bit. Why? If we added the chicken in here right now, it's a good chance that we're gonna have the skin stick to the, uh, the bottom of the pan. So we wanna let just a little heat in here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start browning this side first, about six minutes or so. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do another six minutes. Then when we come back, you remember what I was telling you about 40 clove chicken? Ha <laughs> ha! 40 clove chicken lifestyle. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. Bon dia. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse, if you're just joining us, shame on you. Because we're cooking a little lighter tonight. Huh. Now, potato leek. Going to check on that. Turn the heat down even just a little bit more. We want a simmer action going on. This is kind of like a boiling action, right? 
simmer action. We want to simmer this. It's getting happy, the flavors in here, the evaporation, and then the concentration of flavors. That's how it works. So we want to see just how those flavors are. And I want to see how those potatoes. Nope, look at that. Can get a fork in them, but they're not really quite tender enough. And we're relying a lot on these things being really tender because we want to use that to thicken it. Or you don't have to. All right, so we've got that going on. Chicken that we were browning, right? Light style. OK. You still everything here. Oh, yeah. I was looking for, uh, oh, here it is, hiding on me. So what I want to do, I was telling you earlier, I don't really want to pierce the skin, right? So I've got, I started it on the bottom side. Now I'm starting it on this side here. See how that's nice and brown now? We haven't torn the skin like that at all. Sort of sealing it in. Because we really know this chicken now. So, now what we're going to do, now that we got it browned on both sides, you see how I'm using this sort of this kitchen fork like this, sort of to pick it up from the outside like this, you see? Now, what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to take this out for a second. Then I'm going to show you this light 40 clove chicken. I got about 40 cloves of garlic in here, right? Love that. Love it. So now what we're going to do inside of that chicken small stuff, we're going to saute. We don't want to burn. We just want to saute. We want to keep the movement going in here so we don't burn any of this. This is how simple this dish is, OK? Meanwhile, I want to have the oven on about 375 degrees light. Light oven. Now, we're going to add some salt, because I don't know where you get your cloves. Where I get mine, they don't come seasoned. Some fresh ground pepper. Now, if you want to add other herbs, folks, you can. But remember this. We got the herbs stuffed inside of the chicken. While this is sort of roasting, we're going to get the flavor of that thyme, that bay leaf, the parsley is going to flavor that chicken, OK? Now, as soon as the cloves cook a few minutes, here's what we're going to do. This is optional, of course, but it's light. <laughs> you know, it's a fumé blanc. So I'm going to deglaze with a little bit of white wine, OK? We're going to take the chicken, put it right back inside of there with the garlic and the celery. Now, for all you Dutch oven fans out there that you're not sure if that, if you've got the right seal, you see? See, this has got a seal on this one. Everyone's different. See, mine, it seals. But some that are out there, they don't quite fully seal, OK? If that happens, you cut a little piece of foil like this, lay it exactly on top. OK? And then you put your cover on it. Now you got a perfect seal. All right? OK. OK, I'm going to adjust my oven here. That should be enough for the Dutch oven there. <laughs> Hi, Mom. And. Now, 375, I want to cook this chicken. Oh, it's going to get so happy, too. OK, so there's that. The chicken's in there. I mean, how difficult was that? Come on, give me a break, right? <laughs> and it was really light. It's light. All right. Soup's going on. I'm going to do a very simple accoutrement for that chicken. 
Trevise, right? Radicchio, another name, Trevise. European stem, gonna trim it up a little bit. Cut it right in half. I've got that. Wow. This guy is building a rocket ship. <laughs> gonna take it in half. Then what I'm gonna do, folks, just for a couple minutes, you see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna salt this and uh, I'm gonna add good olive oil. It's just gonna go right inside of that. Gonna take a little balsamic vinegar, okay? Oh yeah, babe. Some fresh ground pepper. Okay? Let it sit for a couple of minutes. Then I'm gonna start grilling it. Then I'll show you what the chicken looks like with 40 cloves of garlic. Stick around, we'll be right back. Come on. Everybody, Emma Lugasi, cooking it up lights, lights tonight. Now, I added the Trevise that's been a little olive oil, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, just kind of on the grill. You could do it in the skillet. You could do it in the oven. And while you were probably getting one of those frozen things or something, I took the boat motor out. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. Honey! <laughs> I got the boat motor back in the soup and pureeing this thing. Now, folks, you don't have to puree it. Nobody says that potato leek soup that you have to puree it. Some people think that if you puree it, then you have to chill it and you should serve it cold as vichyssoise. I don't know who makes up these rules, but hey, Make yourself happy. Do what you want to do. If you want it hot, cold, lumpy. Now, you're probably saying, why is his got that little green hint to it? The amount of leeks that I use versus potato and stock. Okay? That's why I'm going to get that color out of there. That's how simple, folks, it is. I'm going to taste it. Re-season. Oh, yeah, baby. Now, I'm gonna re-season it. Maybe just a tiny bit of salt. Maybe you wanna add a little bit more pepper, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, here's the other thing. I just served this up. No cream, there's no butter in here. Nice and light. So we'll do the light version. You ladies all right with the light version? Oh, yeah. we love it. Or you want the kicked up version? No, no, oh, The light version? Because if you wanna kick it up, even though that it's light, <laughs> you can get a good farmer's cheese, okay, even creme fraiche, or you can get that, uh, you know, those herb-flavored cheeses like that, and what you could do is you could just float. It's still light. You could just float a little bit like that that you could work into your soup and a little bit of chives like this. Mike, you got a shot of that, buddy? Oh, that looks beautiful. There we have it, a little light potato leek soup, okay, folks, light. You guys want the light or you want the kicked up? You want the kicked up? Okay. So we got another kicked up request over here. It's very light. It's practically flying out of my hands. Okay. Give him a little essence over here too. Bam, 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 bam. All right. There you have it, ladies. Okay, folks. So there you have it, a very, very light. Now, this is fantastic during the daytime. Oh, let me tell you one more secret. They're kind of giving me that old, hurry up, in the, uh, in the control tower. That's okay. 
give you a little secret, a little emerald secret. See, when I do this stuff right here, pot food like this, soups, red beans, etc., I'm done. You had your serving. You had your serving. Okay, we're done. We got that much left. You know what I do? Because I'm so freaked out about, like, is it going to spoil while I did all of this work? I go to the freezer right now. I grab a big, big couple of handfuls of ice cubes, and I put the ice cubes right in there. Let it cool. Ha, ha, ha. Put it in my refrigerator. Now I'm not have to worry about it spoiling. I get up. You got to heat it anyhow, right? The next day, you got to heat it anyhow. You're going to have evaporation. You're going to have concentration. So why not put the ice cubes? That's the way that I look at it. Okay. Now. We're going to take our... We're going to take our grilled trevise or oven-roasted trevise. Okay? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Now, how's the soup, ladies? Oh, it's pretty light, huh? Really light. I'm floating. Floating. I love that. I'm floating right now, too. You know why? This bird that I got to know so much, we're on a first and middle initial basis. Oh. <laughs> See, we really cook on this show. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> I know, it's like <laughs> unbelievable. There's that seal. Oh, there's that chicken. Look at that, huh? Oh, yeah, babe. Well, let me show you this. Now, what we're going to do. Oh, look at how it's just like falling apart. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Now, we're going to unhandcuff them. <laughs> and then, watch this. Look at what that garlic cloves. See that gravy it just sort of made like that? I just go like right over. I go back for that, because the garlic now is all sweet and it's light as can be. And I just, oh, you know, I just, uh, maybe it's me, I don't know, but okay. And there you have the 40 cloves chicken, all right? 40 cloves. All right. It's always difficult to do light desserts. Check this out, this time of the year especially. I got a little bit of that H2O and some light brown sugar that I'm gonna make a syrup. And what I'm gonna make the syrup in is I'm gonna add rosemary, couple of cloves, and some orange peel. You with me so far? Okay. Don't have enough water? Don't panic, don't have to call 911. Little more water. I'm making a syrup because this time of the year, it's fantastic. I got regular oranges that I'm gonna make segments, tangerines gonna make segments, and these things right here, which come from Louisiana, they're called satsuma, satsuma oranges. Got a very incredible flavor. Gonna make a combination of those. When I come back, I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. Stick around, please, we're late. <laughs> Yes, indeed. All right, so we're going to take those oranges, satsumas, the tangerines, perfect time of the year for that, and our syrup, brown sugar and water, clove, rosemary. What we're going to do is you're just going to strain that syrup right over that orange mixture, and you'll just kind of let it sit like that. Matter of fact, if you want to get it chilled, you can do that too. And then let me just show you what I like to quickly do. I take a little bit of angel food cake, okay? And then what I do is I take a little bit of that orange stuff, right? <laughs> See, it just sucks it all in, you know? <laughs> and then what I do, I take a little bit. This is frozen yogurt, because we're talking about it being light here. It's light. Frozen yogurt. Then I take those wonderful oranges that we had that beautiful syrup over there like that. Okay, 
Talk about light, little rosemary like that. How light can you get, right? Unbelievable. Yes, indeed. I feel good. I feel light. Hey, I'm Emerald Lagasse. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow, everybody.